All right, guys, so tonight I'm going to make a video about what I like to call my underwear gun. Uh, I refer to it as Mighty Mouse. Um, so this is it, the kel -Tec P32. Um, and again, as I like to do, right, chamber's clear, magwell's clear, gun's unloaded. Um, I do have some loaded mags off the side, and I'm going to show you some things. But anyway, so I've got some things I want to compare it to. I want to give you some data um, some kind of direct comparisons. I think that's the 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 best and simplest thing to to do is show you some direct comparisons. So anyway, first thing I'm gonna do is I've got my kitchen skill here. I'm gonna lay this guy up here. It's empty, as I just showed you, and we're coming in at seven point one ounces. Okay, seven point one ounces. Now, um, to compare that to a competitive firearm. Ruger LCP in 380 auto. So that's in 32. This is in 380 auto. Okay, you can see empty chamber, right? Empty mag, empty mag well. Okay, we're gonna lay that up there and see what it reads. Okay, eight and a half. Okay, so a little heavier, a little heavier. Uh, so 7.1, 8.5. Um, and then I've got my Ruger, open this up for you, Ruger. LCR, okay, Ruger LCR, six shot, 327 Magnum, okay, uh, also what I would consider a pocket gun, comes in at 17.35, so uh, more than double both of those, okay, and then last but certainly not least is my wife's little snub nose, Smith & Wesson 642, 38 Special, okay, and it's going to weigh in at 14.55. So, um, the revolver is obviously much heavier, um, especially the aluminum one is all, is all all metal. And then the LCR is a polymer lower um, with a stainless steel cylinder and barrel insert because it's a magnum load. It's not really a super fair comparison. But anyway, just some pocket guns. Okay, so obviously this guy weighs in the lightest. This is chambered in 32 automatic. I have colored the sights, as you can see. Um, orange and yellow because they're really, really small, so it makes them a little easier to pick up on the range. And it is very much a point-and-shoot gun. I do have a clip on it as well. That adds a, a tiny fraction of weight, but it's about a 7-ounce gun. Um, and the LCP from Ruger is pretty much a copy of kel P380. Um, so I want to talk about these two. So you saw the weight difference. Let me throw one more little thing at you, okay? So here is the LC. P. Again, about eight and a half ounces, 8.5, 8.6, somewhere in that neighborhood. And here is six rounds of Hornady Critical Defense 90 grain, um, and that is their uh, FTX bullet. Okay, uh, so we're going to lay that up there, not counting one in the chamber. We'll go up to 11.7. So loaded, not counting the plus one. If you snap the mag in, feed the top round, 11.7 ounces. Now, the P32 comes with a seven round mag, and I've got that there for you. Take a look. Okay, seven rounder, but you can buy an extended 10 rounder. Okay, it is loaded. This is 10 rounds of 32 ACP. Just going to put it in the mag well for you and show you the grip. Okay, um, so you get a full four finger grip on a little pocket pistol, and because this is so thin, I can pocket carry it with that extended 10 round mag in it. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that out, put this back on the scale, right? 7.15. We're gonna lay that 10 round. We're at 11 ounces. Okay, so I get 11 ounces and I have 10 plus 1 rounds, where I get nearly 12 ounces and I get 6 plus 1. Okay, so one thing to think about. The other thing to think about is this gun is as snag free as any gun I've ever carried. Um, there is obviously no safety, um, but there's also no slide lock. Now you see my slide's locked back, but there is no slide lock. You cannot manually activate this. If I pull it back, let it forward, you just got a free slide. If you insert an empty mag, okay? So if you insert an empty mag, and pull it back, 
it'll lock open. So it only operates on a magazine. The LCP, right, has this external lock, so you can push that up while you're pulling the slide back. Again, with no mag, nothing. If I insert an empty mag, won't lock back on an empty mag. To make this gun as thin and as small as they did in chamber 380, they gave up the room for a slide lock that goes off of the feed lip of the uh, follower of the magazine. So um, this does not lock open on the last round. This does not lock open on the last round. And I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like that. Um, I mean, it is it is a world of compromises with carrying small guns. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to take my scale out of the way here. Um, so what I wanted to show you was I could come in at less weight with 10 rounds of 32 than I can with six rounds of 380. Now, what's the big deal? This gun came out before the LCP. I bought this gun about a year after it came out from Kel-Tec. Um, it was kind of the first of its kind. And at the time, there was nothing even close. The closest thing to it would have been this 642 over here. Um, which is nearly double the weight. So you're going from 7 to almost 14 ounces unloaded. Okay? So I bought this gun many, many moons ago. I mean, I want to say it's been at least 15 years ago. Uh, but it's been quite a while. I've had it for a long, long time. I do not carry this gun. Okay? I don't carry it out in public. Um, I do feel like it's a little underpowered. Uh, for me, a 380 is really my minimum capacity. Okay? That's actually why on the LCP is I did buy that for when I pocket carry a semi-auto. This one's a little underpowered powered for me. So why do I own it? Why did I buy it? And why do I still have it? The answer is really simple. I call this my underwear gun. So about, uh, depending on who you read, but, but there's a great big study done by the Lot Foundation, and they found that nearly 52% of civilian self-defense shootings that were that they were able to find records of occurred in the home. And so I know a lot of folks who are avid concealed carriers. They carry every day. They carry all the time. But one problem, they don't carry at home. Okay. They come home and the first thing they do from wearing that gun in their waistband, uh, you know, wearing that crossbreed or that alien gear, that Nate Square tactical, tactical in the waistband, you know, they're tired of it digging on them. It's hot. It's heavy. They take it off. Okay. Me, if I come home in the evening, I'm tired of wearing my gun and I want to just put on a pair of running shorts, a pair of gym shorts, you know, just a flexible waist, no tie, just, just elastic. Um, and that's actually the reason for the, the clip. Um, I have a couple of pairs of flannel pants that I wear in the, in the uh, wintertime um, that don't have pockets. I can clip this in the waistband of a pair of elastic waisted pants, what I call gym shorts, running shorts, active wear. I'm not active in them. I'm sitting around watching TV in them, but but I guess they're called active wear in the store. I can clip this to the waistband. I can put this in the pocket. It does not pull my shorts down. That's what I bought it for. So um, the reason I carry this around the house is because it is not there to protect me from a bad guy. It is there to get me to a larger firearm, okay? This is on my person for me to fight my way to a more powerful firearm, okay? I don't carry it out in public because I don't think it's sufficient, okay? Um, if you catch me pocket carrying, I am carrying this gun, which is six rounds of 327 Federal Magnum, and it's 115 grain gold dot going 1400 feet a second so um anyway um it, it is formidable uh, and that is chronographed from this one and seven eighths barrel that's not from the box that's chronographed off this gun and um so that delivers about three times the muzzle energy of this guy uh, and so i feel pretty well armed with this and i am that person that goes with power over capacity i would rather make a bigger hole and have less rounds. Um, so I'd rather have six rounds of this 
than 10 rounds of this, okay? Um, so, but I do carry it around the house because that gun will pull my pants down. That gun will pull my pants down. Now, fast forward several years, Ruger came out with the LCP. This gun won't pull my pants down either, okay? So I could carry this gun over this gun, okay? Um, but I still have it. I still like it and I still use it. And this one doesn't have the pocket clip. You can't buy the pocket clip. So I can't put this on the waistband of a pair of athletic shorts um, if I want to just run downstairs and check on something. So we've already tucked in for bed, you know. So anyway, um, just wanted to show you guys that, show you that this guy did in fact lock open on the last round. Um, but you have to have an empty mag. Um, is this snag free? I mean, nothing. You can run your finger over this. There's no sharp point anywhere on this gun going this way as part of your draw stroke. It is impossible to snag this gun. Whereas if you take like the LCP, if you push her on this rear sight or on the back of this front sight, they're sharp. These can actually catch. I've never had any issue with that. And I do practice with this gun out of a pocket holster. But I was really impressed with the fact that kel -Tec set this gun up. And I mean, it is literally as slick as you can get. There's no sharp edges anywhere to catch. Um, and there's no extra buttons. You can't accidentally engage the safety. You can't accidentally engage the slide lock. Um, you, it's, it's literally like a revolver with a magazine. You pull the trigger and it goes bang. Um, and that's it. Okay. So, um, it's, it's pretty simplistic. Um, if you can see there's some finish wear on the slide. Um, I've worn this gun a lot. Um, and I have, this is the gun that I wear when I'm afraid to wear a nicer gun. So like every now and then when I do carry this one out, um, and really that's, I haven't carried this one in about five years outside of the house. But um, if you go back in time when I didn't have as many options to carry, um, I would carry this one when I didn't want to mess up a nicer gun. Okay. So, uh, you know, I've got a $500 revolver and I've got this thing, which I actually picked up for right around 200 bucks new uh, when it came out. And, you know, this finish wear is from like, oh, buddy wants me to go help pick up hay. I'll stick this in my pocket in 95 degree August heat and go pick up hay for four hours. Um, and the whole gun would just be drenched with sweat when I would come home. And it'd be so wet, it would it, you could wring it out. Um, so, you know, it has been worn, but now it, it really is just my underwear gun. It's, it's really just for when I'm around the house wearing a pair of pants with no pockets and I want to carry something, this is it. So anyway, the kel -Tec P32, um, it is a good gun. It's a reliable gun. It shoots, um, it goes bang every time for me. I know some folks have had some issues with kel -Tecs. I do carry it with gold dots. I don't carry full metal jacket. I carry it with gold dots. Um, and I've had pretty good luck with this expanding on some different targets I've shot. Rubber horse mats, um, uh, water jugs. Um, we shot some foam cans one time and recovered a couple of bullets and these would expand in that. Um, they, they do okay from this, from this barrel. Um, you know, so, um, but anyway, and, and like I said, factory mag is seven. Um, but, but I got the extended 10, uh, and I feel okay with 10 rounds of this. Um, you know, it's definitely not my first choice. But um, it's definitely a good compromise when you're when you're tired and you want to put on a pair of elastic waisted shorts and still have a carry gun. So um, and I and I know some folks who carry like NAA mini revolvers in a pair of athletic shorts. And I'm just going to tell you, you know, this will beat any NAA mini revolver because it's double action. Um, and so when I when I go bang bang bang. It's, it's popping off round after round, whereas the NAA, you have to thumb the hammer back every time. Uh, and they're chambered in 22. So, um, and I know a lot of folks say, hey, you know, 32s, if you ever look at a 32 automatic, um, they are semi-rimmed. And so I'm going to get this to focus here. The rim is slightly wider than the cartridge, okay? Um, and so there's this thing with, with these called rim lock, where this rim gets behind the one below it, okay? So it's going to be something like that in the magazine. It gets behind it. Uh, and you you have a real hard time getting this thing to feed if you do that. Um, like I said, I've owned this gun. It's It's got to be more than 15 years. Um, and I shoot it 
I'll take it to the range four or five times a year. It's not something I practice with a ton, but um, and I used to shoot it more when I had less carry options before I owned the LCP and the LCR as options. This was my go-to for you know pocket carry deep concealment, and so I shot it more. I've never knock on wood. I've never experienced rim lock. Um, I don't know if it's maybe I just load my magazines well, um, you know, but but I don't have any issues. I've never had any issues with it. Um, if I ever did have an issue, I think I would have a lot less trust for this gun. Um, but anyway, so it's just kind of a fun little gun. I call it my underwear gun. Wanted to do a video about it, show you guys the Ruger, uh, not the Ruger, this is the Ruger, uh, the kel P32 and 32 ACP, um, or some folks will call it uh, 765 Browning. If you buy European ammunition, it's called 765 Browning. Um, but anyway, it's 32 automatic and uh, shoots typically 60 grain hollow points. So it's definitely less uh, less punch than a 380, a lot less punch than a 9 or, or a, a 327 Magnum or 38 Special or 357 Magnum or um, any of those types of guns. But, like I said, I mean, you can carry 10 rounds in a pocket. If capacity matters to you, um, this might be a better choice for you than, than the Ruger LCP. Um, and it's a very low-cost gun. Um, you know, I, the only caution I would give is I've owned two kel -Tecs. One has been this one, and it's it's been really reliable. The other one was a uh, a 9mm single stack, a, a P9. And uh, it just really... Never had 100% reliability with that gun. And um, I, I thought about sending it back to kel -Tec, And I know that a lot of folks, you know, they do have a lifetime warranty. And if you send it back to them, they'll fix it. And, um, you know, but but it was one of those things where I just really didn't like the ergonomics of the gun. And I had other options to carry that were, were pretty much the same size. And so I just sold it. Um, you know, but this one's kind of stuck with me. And uh, it's been pretty reliable. It's been a great gun. And, uh, you know, a lot of fun to shoot. So anyway, um, that's it for tonight. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Hope that helps somebody.